Jianu Asi Viva podcast recording like I am me itna tu se kemeo han ji itan satrika main dr jaspreet te badi khushi hai mainu ke itan aaj assi viva episode record kar rahe ha han ji va va so it's uh it's like slowly podcast by podcast we're here so the assi podcast assi galbad or assi bul baba bulesha galbad karanga the pichle me um special message dasa hmm so stick around oh matlab podcast de akhir vich towards the end of the podcast han ji han ji tusi dassonge dassonge han ji dassonge theek hai चलो फिर गल कर बाबा बुले शाह बारे ठीक है सो इथन तुसी बाबा बुले शाह दा नाम सुने हां जी मैं याद तुसी दसो पर मैं नहीं बड़ा चीजा पता सो मैं तो हनु दसया सी सो बाबा बुले शाह पंजाबी विच बहुत बड़ा नाम है सो बाबा बुले शाह पंजाबी दे बड़े बड़े कवि है फिलोसोफर है ठीक है सो उना दा जन्म 1680 व्हिच होया ते उना दी डेथ 1757 व्हिच होई ठीक है सो ओ जिनो से कहने आजकल मॉडर्न डे पाकिस्तान पर उस टाइम ते अनडिवाइडेड इंडिया ਠੀਕ ਹੈ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਵਿੱਚ ਸੀ ਉਹ ਤੇ ਉਹ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਫਲਸਫਾ ਬੜਾ ਮਜ਼ੇਦਾਰ ਹੈ ਮਜ਼ੇਦਾਰ ਦਾ ਮਤਲਬ ਕੀ ਹੈ ਮਜ਼ਾ ਮਜ਼ਾ ਇਸ ਫਨ ਲਾਈਕ ਓ ਹਾਂਜੀ ਯੂ نو ਮਜ਼ੇਦਾਰ ਵੈਨ ਯੂ ਐਡ ਦਾਰ ਇਟਸ ਕਾਈਂਡ ਆਫ ਲਾਈਕ ਮੇਕਸ ਇਟ ਲਾਈਕ ਥਿਸ ਕੁਆਲਿਟੀ ਰਾਈਟ ਹਮ ਸੋ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਫਲਸਫਾ ਬੜਾ ਮਜ਼ੇਦਾਰ ਬੜਾ ਸਾਦਾ ਸਾਦਾ ਦਾ ਮਤਲਬ ਪਤਾ ਸਾਦਾ ਸਾਦਾ ਮਤਲਬ ਲਾਈਕ ਪ੍ਰੈਕਟੀਕਲ ਯਾ ਲਾਈਕ ਸਿੰਪਲ Mm-hmm. something that is not very esoteric that you have to like scratch your head like what was that it is so simple Hi. so let's start right away and yes. uh, yeah so that's baba bulle shah um so i'll say the first couplet theek hai theek hai chal bullya chal bullya chal utthe chaliye jithe sare anne dasso matlab samajh aaya uh let's go bulle uh-huh. right uh-huh. um somewhere uh-huh nice so okay. the key word here is anne 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 menu ni pata so anne is where people who are blind who cannot see theek hai oh han ji so chal bullya chal utthe chaliye jithe sare anne so sare means sare where everybody oh, everyone, yeah. yeah so sare is everybody like sara means everyone or everything you know it's like one of those words chal bulleya chal utthe chaliye jithe sare anne na koi saadi jaat pichhane na koi saadi jaat pichhane na koi sanu manne so na koi where we cannot be mm-hmm. I'm assuming like judged because everyone's blind like we cannot be seen. Yeah, so when everyone's blind you you cannot jaat is and then where where we cannot be seen or like we cannot yeah. see anyone. So what else. happens when nobody can see each other but you still have to interact with each other? Right. Can you tell if you're meeting someone who's royalty or who is rich or poor or who's pretty or not? What what is the color of their skin or hair or eyes? You cannot see any of that. All you can tell is or feel is the other person's personality how they interact with you so <laughs> yeah it's very interesting uh, i think this is personally a little huh. bit more esoteric um because i think there's a lot of a lot of depth to that because obviously there's the the ground level philosophical idea of a world where no one essentially can can be judged because that's what he means by by blindness because you can obvi- anyone you can still act when you're blind you can still take action mm-hmm. um but you can't observe the world you cannot observe specifically others because that's mm-hmm. the the point in the last two lines so i think it's a a very feminine mentality and i don't say that i'm not saying that in a demeaning way and i don't think 
that it is a demeaning thing. It's just, the, you know, it's a, a spectrum of ideas. There's a spectrum in the universe. Um, and it pulls, and I think on the pole of masculinity and femininity, it's, it's more feminine. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's feminine because of its its ideas on judgment, right? Because a lot of the, the feminine nature sort of ignores reality, or not necessarily ignores reality, but places emotion, feelings, relational conflict above reality. That's just its priority hierarchy. So his idea that... Um, Instead of dealing with judgment, it's to create a universe, a, a world, or to want to be in a world without judgment. That itself is very feminine, um, which which is interesting because if you look at his life, he's very outspoken individual, mm -hmm. and that makes total sense. Can understand why he would want that because he has these these strong ideas, these strong convictions, and clearly he must feel to some degree targeted. He was by the so. clergy, the Muslim clergy. He was always sort of at. A, a war of words with them. Yes. Because he didn't conform. I think he was a non-conformist. He wanted to... He felt like everybody should be treated as a human being, equal. But, you know, the world is not like that. Exactly. So I think... Mm -hmm. uh, and I feel, from a philosophical perspective mm -hmm. on whether or not this would be a, an ideal world, I don't think it would be a very good world because I think some of the, the beauty in taking and gaining merit is being able to use that merit. And if everyone's blind, meaning no one can judge... Merit cannot be recognized. So I think such a world would be uh, a difficult one to live in. Like we would resolve one con of our current world, but I think a lot of unforeseen cons would arise. You know what I just thought? I When I read this, so I love this one. But it's, it's interesting how you bring in that feminine. <laughs> <laughs> See, it makes sense, I think. You know, it's two different perspectives. Yeah. You know, and even then, I like, uh, this isn't the first time I'm hearing it, which is why I'm... Really? Well, yeah. Well, you've told me. Oh, we, we've of course. discussed it, okay, yes, you know, yeah. in the past couple of weeks. Uh -huh. So I've had some time to to, to think about it, uh -huh. uh, because I think to understand the other side. Because obviously, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm born male. I have a, a masculine mind. Mm -hmm. So to understand the other side, it it takes a lot of thought. Like I had to that, that I had to develop that reasoning, <laughs> you know, under to to develop an understanding of where that comes from and the nature of the idea. Hmm. So you so. know, before I move on, you know what the other thought I had was. Like, I always used to wonder if Ethan was my daughter, how it would be. <laughs> but for some reason right now, I'm glad that, like you said, you know, you are my son. Because t when we're reading Bulisha, I mean, isn't this like just... Yeah, so it completes how it? come you liked it so much? Like, what was your perspective on it? I think it's just um, having been grown, like I was born in South Asia, right? So you grow up, every culture has its own judgments. So the, the judgments over there are gender-based, right? Male, female, female always being put down, very patriarchal society. So I grew up with that. And um, and that's part of the reason I'm here in America. To me, America felt more like a level playing field as a woman. Right. And then the second is the judgment of uh, caste. You know, it's still pretty prevalent. All you have to do is open any... Um, mar marriage uh, classified sections in a typical Indian newspaper and it's literally uh, you know on the basis of caste yeah so you know even though the gurus and people like Bulle Shah they try to lift us out of that but you know these things don't just go away right yeah. and then on this side of the world you know here we've seen issues with race um, and then also not just that uh, even um, based off on um, assets Economic discrimination, right? Yes. Like, that's just, I think it's human nature. I finally come to this. This human nature. So to me, this particular, where everyone's blind, to me it was like this idealistic society where everyone's happy because there's no judgment. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It just appealed to me. No, I understand very much so. Okay. But... All right. Should we move on to the next one? Yeah, for sure. Okay. So do you want to read it? Uh, yeah, why not? Oh. Give it a go. Okay. Jerob Milda. Not there. Oh, not there. Not there. Jerob Milda. Dadua Makianu. Okay, let's, let's just do one couplet. Like, so, yeah, those yeah. are the first two. So, I'll say it again in Jerob Milda. Not there. Not So, you wanna to say the meaning of that? Yeah, so if we like, if we meet God, mm -hmm. uh, not the end, do they are. 
So I'm like, not sure what if it was means. like nahana is to shower and torna is to wash. So if you were to, you mm-hmm. know how we say like that one expression, cleanliness is next to God. Because we feel good when we are clean and showered. But if we were to find God, you know, in the most clean state, when we are all showered, washed up, then who would find God most easily? Yeah. Tera milna, dadua, machianu. Dadu is frogs, machi is fish. So the frogs and the fish would find God. Like all the all, sort of the animals who live in water, right? Yeah. Yeah, they would have so, first access. Jera milna, jungle firya, tera milna, gaya bachianu. So jera milna, jungle firya. So tera milna, gaya bachianu. Jerab Milda, like if you were to f- f- uh, wander, f- wander, yeah, find God in like the forests uh-huh. and the, the fields, then the calves, the what, like the Gaya. cows, like, yeah. calves. I think it's he's God. referring to more like the pastures. Yeah, right? yeah, like the fields, like especially, like people go into wilderness. Oh, right? especially in the old Punjab, uh, there were uh, you know this Punjab is land of five rivers. So back before all of this land was cultivated. There, there were these areas in between the rivers. They were called the bars, bar, bar, literally meaning like um, a, a jungle land, and they had these names like Sandal Bar, Nili Bar, you know. Mm. So, and in in those bars, people, there were actually people who lived in those bars. They were kind of like these wilder, um, for lack of a better word, tribal people who lived the old life where they had animals. So they were called Janglis who lived in the bar. So I think he's referring to that wilderness. Where the okay. cows would go off to pasture and come back. Not necessarily like the real wild jungle. I uh, Yeah, that makes sense because you don't really think of cows when you think of the jungle. Yes, yeah, that's what I thought, yeah. <laughs> makes uh-huh. sense. So, Jera Milda Mandir Masiti. Te Milda Chum Chidikia. Chidikianu. So, oh, I love this one. This I want to say it, Ethan. Jera Milda Mandir Masiti. So, what do you think of this meaning? So, he's saying if God were found in the mosques and the uh, temples, temples uh-huh. then the bats in who live there would, would uh, you know, find God the easiest. Yeah, because in all those, especially in that part of the world, those temples and mosques, they were ancient. And what do you find in ancient buildings? You know, there with those high ceilings, you find the bats live there. So they are the closest to God then, by that principle, right? And then the last two lines. Ve mian bulle. Ve mian. The N is kind of nasal. Ve mian bullion rub. Ohan. Orna. Nu milda. Del nitan. Nitian. Or, oh man. Nitian. Achia. Sachian. Sorry, I'm, my reading is kind of weird. It's Punjabi written in English, so I'm not very used to that. Ve mia bulia, rab ona nu milda, dil nitiya achiya sachiya nu. So, you want to comment on that? Yeah, so he's saying that, uh, well, first he, he talks to himself. Hmm. He said, God is uh, found with those who are mentally and, and spiritually, mm-hmm. uh, I guess, righteous. Yeah, in the good deeds, in the good hearts, in truth. Yeah. So all the, the good stuff, right? That's where you feel God. So I, I think out of all the uh, literature, poetry I have read, this one is very close to me because it's, it's so simple. Can you say that? Yeah, I think this one embodies the, <laughs> the more simple side of Bule Shah better. Yeah. Especially with the beginning. I really like the beginning because <laughs> he's talking about isolating these practices and he makes fun of it like, you know, these beings these are not beings these are like animals mm-hmm. literally all they do is this one practice their whole life and of course they're not close to god right uh-huh. it is us when we use our mind and we take advantage of our, our spirituality mm-hmm. that is how we get close to god yeah. when we refine that which is unique to us so. i think it also transcends every faith and religion in this i just feel like doesn't he like rise above that and um it's hard for me to explain, but he hits a nail on the head. Um, by yeah, I think so because I think a lot of religions they they get caught up in rituals, mm-hmm. and I think I'm not saying that that's bad. I think rituals do have a place. They help keep tradition, and 
they help prove that you really do that you are, truly believe something right because if you truly believe something then you're willing to to do certain things to prove that mm-hmm. but um at the same time you can't do those things and expect that that itself is going to create your actual righteousness mm-hmm. you know the act to prove your righteousness does not create the righteousness and i think that's exactly what his message is you know you can bathe yourself but you know the fish bathes more and they're not righteous <laughs> so anyway i think um it's uh, the chamchadikya it just it just makes me laugh so much i remember when i read this uh, at least 5 years ago to your younger brother ranak and um i still remember you know what he asked me he said so cham chadik i told him it's it's how we say bat in punjabi so he said mom how do you say man in punjabi and i said aadmi and he said so batman would be cham chadik aadmi <laughs> and i just you know died laughing i said yeah cham chadik aadmi you know so um you know it's so simple or uh, to me ethan whatever level of punjabi you know it still open doors for you to understand bolesha that is what i want to convey through this podcast that you don't have to be fluent in this great you know some major course you need to do it's about what are you getting with what you know yeah so i think this has been a, a pleasant uh, discovery for for me and i'm sure you too yeah i agree and i yeah. think that's the whole reason i wanted to start learning punjabi mm-hmm. is to connect to my culture better uh-huh. which of course this is either the you know the great works of my culture yeah. and to communicate with um you know family and and older relatives or even to even or sorry even to be able to go to india and be able to communicate with people there so that i can still feel comfortable going back well and you don't even have to go to india you can just go to california so you want to just share <laughs> yeah, with our yeah. audience about that so to close up on uh, the special message a few parts so First I want to comment on just how great of an experience this has been because you know I went to California this last week for my spring break and I was able to meet a lot of my family and uh some family friends and one of our relatives I went to I met his his parents who actually helped raise my mom oh. so it's an interesting uh relationship and i was able to speak to them in in punjabi and i understood mostly everything they said i mean it's simple conversation but still and they were they were very happy and i was able to to speak to them mm-hmm. and respond and hold conversation which is i i saw as amazing because in in the past whenever i met older relatives who didn't really speak a lot of english it was just kind of like i had no idea what they were saying and i just sit there silently but this time it wasn't like that. Yeah, and they've been so, watching your podcast. Yeah, yeah, they they've been watching. So, <laughs> so they were extremely uh, excited and looking forward to, yeah. you know, seeing you. And the other part is it's all obviously been great to get connected with the culture and these works, right? The last two videos, this video uh to read Bolesh Shah, Guru Nanak mm-hmm. and to to Baba b- yeah, build my confidence in mm-hmm. beginning reading that to build practice. What about music? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, and also while I was there I got um hooked to some Punjabi music from one of our family friends. He he would put on like Siddu Musawala and uh Karan Ajla and it was a, it was a good time. Diljeet, Dil yeah, Diljeet the song. And his concert is now. <laughs> yeah, his concert's in May. I I might go to that. Uh-huh. So anyway, um and also started watching Punjabi movies. So all of that I don't understand all of it but it's all now or sorry now I'm at this level where I can begin to practice and actually utilize what my culture has produced mm-hmm. to continue to build that up. So anyway, that's the first part of the message. Unfortunately, there's a bitter part. It's a little bitter sweet. Um this is our last episode. Um yeah, we've kind of this pathway has been to the level like I said to enter begin entering the the practice stage or not to begin entering to enter the practicing stage so that I can refine my punjabi on my own because I think that's the most important stage to get to in language learning is to be able to actually start speaking and to feel confident listening to the language because once you're confident to listen to the language and to speak the language then 
as long as you are not, you know, letting everything go in one ear and out the other, and you're understanding and you continue to learn, then you're going to better yourself in the language, and you don't, you no longer need to be, uh, you know, studying or doing anything like that. So anyway, we might have some content coming around the corner, uh, so look out for that. So anyway, do you have anything else you want to say? Both with you. So, I have a lot of fun, Ethan. So, I have a lot of fun. 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 I have a lot of fun.